Good day, beautiful people, and welcome to Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and if you do hear a little bit of echo or a lot of echo, I'm in a sort of um, enclosed area because they're doing some repairs right outside my room, um, <laughs> the place that I'm staying at, and it's really noisy. So um, I'm in this enclosed area, so there's a little bit of well, there might be a lot of echo, actually. And I uh, apologize for that. And I hope you can, um, the sound comes out um, better than um, it has in the last couple of um, episodes. I wanted to thank you all for being here and for watching the videos that um, are the last couple of episodes and commenting and all that kind of good stuff. It is quite challenging trying to get um, uh, episodes out when you are on the road, sort of, and um, not staying at any sort of fancy establishment that has, you know, those accommodations where Wi-Fi and internet and all of that is readily available in a sort of um, brand name hotel um, or chain. I'm staying in presently in sort of local um, hotels. I'm not saying I'm, I'm rugging it. I'm not exactly rugging it. Um, it's a nice establishment, very quaint, very historical. Um, but as consequence, um, not very good Wi-Fi, <laughs> if any at all. It's very spotty. Last um, Yesterday's episode actually took about 24 hours to upload, and I had to take my laptop uh, elsewhere to a cafe that I found um, where um, the Wi-Fi was a lot faster. But anyways, having said all of that in that preamble, just thank you. I just want to thank you for your patience. And as I continue on this sort of week or two week um, away from my home base and um, sort of just doing a little bit of self-discovery and reconnecting with myself and with the world around me and all of that, you know, finding finding the center. Um, I think it's important to do that. Well, today's episode, I wanted to talk about racism. And if you're tired hearing about racism, well, so am I. But it's not going anywhere. And it doesn't matter who or whom goes around saying we are in the post-racist era. They are in fantasy land or in wonderland. Or they're white. Let's just be blunt and say it as it is. Anyone who thinks that we are in a post-racial environment in any country at all, I've got news for you. You white and your experience compared to other people's continues to be very different. And your ideology or idea is very different um, in regards to how you may perceive or see racism or how you interpret it or what you may even define as racism. So I'm sure many of you already have heard because I've been following since this Romeo and Juliet um, announcement was made um, for the West End in the UK in London. Um, the star, Francesca uh, Amewada Rivers, and I hope I'm pronouncing that at least close to um, her name. I do apologize if I'm not. Um, since she was announced as Juliet and Tom Holland, famously known as Spider-Man, and the boyfriend of, you know, that one famous Zendaya, she has been receiving quite a lot of abusive, racist comments even misogynistic abuse being hurled at her. And this stuff doesn't stop to kind of not, I don't want to say amuse me because it's not amusement that I get out of it. It's anger. It truly is anger. It, it angers me that time and time again, we have to suffer this kind of indignation and when I say indignation, indignation in 
doesn't matter how hard you work, doesn't matter how talented you are, it doesn't matter to these moronic people who seem to think that they have a voice or should have a voice and an opinion on the talent of someone else or the worthiness of someone else. Listen, you freaking cowards. It's great to hide behind the screen of the internet. It's great to go again and have some kind, kind of, you know, fake identity and all of that. Wonderful. You're a coward. Coward. That's what you are. Because the work that she has had to do and she's done in order to be able to get that role, to be where she is, you haven't even gotten out of bed yet to do anything. So shut up, sit down, and you don't get to opinionate. Keep your racist remarks to yourself. Now, I'm commenting on this based on um, what I was reading yesterday of on uh, Variety. And uh, the title basically reads, Romeo and Juliet star Francesca Amewada Rivers, backed by over 800 black actors, in open letter condemning racist and misogynistic abuse. And the article is written by uh, Naman Ramanchandra. Now, I have a couple of things that I wanted to say about this, but I'm going to read some of the article. And it says here, uh, over 800 black women and non-binary actors have signed an open letter condemning the online racial abuse of Francesca Amewada Rivers, who was recently cast as Juliet in a London West End production of Romeo and Juliet alongside Tom Holland. The letter published in The Guardian on Wednesday was the initiative of e Enola Holmes actor Susan Huacoma, uh, playwright Somalia Noye Seaton, and um, it reads, When news of Francesca uh, Mewada Rivers cast in in Jamie Lloyd's production of Romeo and Juliet was announced, so many people celebrated and welcomed this news. Many of us took to social media to shower our baby sis with love and congratulations. Um, a huge deal for someone so young in their career. A huge rising star. It continues to say, but then what followed was a too familiar horror that many of us visible black, dark skinned performers have experienced. The racist and misogynistic abuse directed at such a sweet soul has been too much to bear. For a casting announcement of a play to ignite such twisted, ugly abuse is surely embarrassing for those so, em so empty and barren in their own lives that they must meddle in hateful abuse. And then it goes on to say or name some of the um, signatories on the open letter. Um, the letter the letter comes after Romeo and Juliet producer Jamie Lloyd's company issued a statement last week saying, following the announcement of our Romeo and Juliet cast, there has been a barrage of deplorable racist abuse online directed towards a member of our company. This must stop. The statement did not name Amewada Rivers. The Jamie Lloyd Company statement was welcomed by the letter signatories who said they hope it would extend to committed emotional support for Francesca on her journey with the production. And this is in quotes, too many times theater companies, broadcasters, producers, and streamers have failed to offer any help or support when their black artists face racist or misogynistic abuse. 
reporting is too often left on the shoulders of the abused, who are also then expected to promote said show. The letter continues. We want to send a clear message to Francesca and all black women performers who face this kind of abuse. We see you. We see the art you... Sorry, Fox. This, this stuff really angers me. <laughs> we see the art you manage to produce with not only the pressures that your white colleagues face, but with the added traumatic hurdle of mis misogynoir, we are so excited to watch you shine. Now, he, this is great, okay? Here's where I have a commentary or maybe a thought or, or, or something. Look, I'm not a person who likes to look at the glass half full, right? Or was it, no, half empty. You know, I want to look at it as half full. A statement is a statement. Here is my beef. Why is this statement not a statement of behalf of all actors? All actors, black, white, Asian, tall, short, big, small, old, young, all, all, all actors should be in arms about this. They should be angry about this. They should be coming out and supporting a fellow actor. It shouldn't take black women and non-binary actors to have to make this statement. It should be on behalf of all performers. It's simple. You attacked one of us, you attacked all of us. Why is there not a statement? Or if there is, pardon moi. Je m'excuse. I'm bad. I didn't see it, so if it exists, my apology. And I will swallow my, 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 my rage. But that is what I would like to see. I would like to see the community. I would like to see all the other productions come out and say, this is not acceptable. This is our sister. Not just the black community. This is our sister. Our theater sister, our actor sister, our actress sister, our performer sister. This is our child. And we will not allow this. Unacceptable. When Halle Bailey confronted the same nonsense with The Little Mermaid, the same nonsense, what kind of support she received? I mean, I have to, I have to, I have to, you know, do my little clap here for Disney that that they they didn't bail. But also, what kind of support did they provide for her when she had to go through these these awful things that they were saying about her, and still are. Anyone who keeps saying racism is not well and alive is in Lala freaking land. Every time I hear a British commentator, TV reporter, or any one of these nonsensical bobbleheads who go on television or these shows and say, well, Meghan Markle, it was obviously not racism at all. We were nice to her when she came here. Yeah. So, so, so none of it was racist. Like, like none, none of it. The comparisons also, none of it. The monkey, none, no, no, that wasn't racist either. 
the call in her how she she has no class and 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 the other one has this dignified class because she's oh, oh look at her she knows how to walk and talk and when they've done exactly the same thing and we don't need to rehash this whole thing about the avocado and the peach and the this and the that and the hole in the belly bump and not the belly bump. Oh, and oh, is it a baby, not a baby? Is she pregnant? Is she not? You know, at this point, I think maybe neither Kate was pregnant. Maybe Kate didn't give birth to those three children. Were we there? Did we see it happen? I'm not sure. I mean, Kate has got this disappearing act happening right now. And I mean, I, I, listen, I don't even want to bring Kate into this, but it's just, it's just a lot of frustration. It really is. Because these people fail to see racism and discrimination and all of it laid out right in front of them. And this young, beautiful actress... And I've seen her in stuff. I've seen her in, in Bad Education. I've seen her in Medea. I've seen her. So, <laughs> you are so offended that a black, young, beautiful actress is going to play Juliet. Oh, get a life. Get a life. Go read a book. Find an imagination. Get out of your a hole. Get a life. Let me tell you something. I know you're kicking and pushing and, and all this stuff. And I know the world is going through some kind of transition here, right? Because these people are not giving up. They're not giving up easily. They're going to keep their harassment. They're going to keep all these nasty things and saying these vile, vile things. Supported by certain media corporations. Supported by some old geezer that owns a lot of media in different countries in the world. And these media barons all over the place. It's these people with power, who owns stuff, don't have the, to take a stand. I've been watching, just to illustrate this a little bit more, how alive and well racism is. The next report or the next um, video is... is, is I'm, I'm just giving you a warning. You know, some of it is is, is tough. It's tough. Um, I debated. Oh, come on, Antonio. I debated whether or not to show it. But I think it's important. I think it's really, really important. Because I've said this countless times, and I'll say it again. What happens to the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan, and Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, is not isolated from what is happening in the rest of the world, is not isolated in regards to how racism is alive and well, is not isolated in regards to the abuse and continued abuse that is launched at the Duchess. It's not isolated. It's not isolated. And we need to start to see and connect all the dots. So, fair warning to all of you. Um... The next video, there are moments that are quite, quite tough, but um, here you go.
This is Real Madrid star forward Vinicius Jr. With the Brazil national team, the 23-year-old tried to hold back tears after the constant abuse he has suffered on the world stage of professional sports. Here's a sample. Against Valencia, Vinicius was racially abused and called, quote, a monkey by supporters. He has tried signaling, just as he did here, of the racism he has endured. But the president of La Liga, the president, Javier Tebas, has showed time and time again that he appears rather indifferent. Headlines all over the world, but not necessarily here in Spain. We're going to take a look at how this story is being covered here. And I think it's important to look at the language used by the media here. I'm going to start off by looking at the Catalan Sports Daily Sport. On the front cover, the lead story is about Lionel Messi. There is a story at the top and it says, Escándalo Vinicius en Mestalla. It doesn't say racist scandal in Mestalla. It doesn't say Vinicius suffers racism once again, scandalously in Mestalla. It says Vinicius scandal in Mestalla. Almost putting the blame on him. This is Marca. This is the best-selling sports paper in Spain. Their headline is Puro Madrid. It's because Real Madrid's basketball team won the Euro League. En todos los líos, it says here. In all the problems. Vinicius was the protagonist in all the polemic actions in Mestalla before being sent off by the Burgos Benguer chair. Again, it's building this narrative that in some way Vinicius is to blame. Against Real Valladolid, the abuse occurred yet again. This time, bananas were thrown in Vinicius's direction as he left the pitch. As opposed to just telling everybody that you're fighting racism and you've been doing so for years, tell everybody what you've been doing. Show us some kind of evidence of that. But with no evidence, certainly within, within the stadiums, certainly especially as far as Vinicius Jr. is concerned, I'm not sure how you, as the head of a league, I'm not sure how you, as any right-thinking adult human being, sits down and pens that as a response to Vinicius Jr. ESPN's Shaka Hislop would go at Tebas on the worldwide leader. In the most terrible scenes um, has ended up confronting the racism in La Liga and the entirety of Spain after he was racially abused from the stands throughout Real's 1-0 defeat at Valencia on Sunday. And during the game, the Brazilian attempted to point out to the referee the fans who behind the goal were racially abusing him. The ref ignored him. Um, and by the end of the game, he'd been red-carded and cast as a villain after wrestling with an opponent who charged at and choked him. The men in Blazers spoke on it as well. We need to come together, even the players that from past and have a unified approach at this. The only way that people are going to listen is if players will step away from games and say, listen, this weekend we ain't playing. Until your rules and regulations are bang in place, there's, there's games that are going to be missed in the calendar. Still. Even with many in the media space ringing the alarm, the attacks continued. Atletico Madrid, the fierce rivals to Real, saw their supporters hang a black doll from a highway with Vinicius's number on the back of it. From the Athletics, Mario Cordagana and Ali Rampling, Vinicius Jr. has suffered persistent racist abuse in Spain and has been subjected to it in over 10 Spanish stadiums over the past two years. However, he said he had not considered leaving Spain, as that would give those who have abused him, quote, exactly what they want. Things have gotten worse since the first time I denounced what happened to me, he would say. 
Because people are not punished, they feel like they can keep saying things about the color of my skin to try to affect how I play. But they could try to do that in other ways, and I wouldn't have a problem with that. I just want to play. And I want to be able to go to stadiums without anyone bothering me because of the color of my skin. He'd say, I will stay because that way the racist can continue to see my face more and more. I'm a bold player. I play for Real Madrid and we win a lot of titles and that doesn't sit well with a lot of people. I just want to play football, but it's hard to move forward. I feel less and less like playing. Continuing on from his presser, he'd state, the lack of punishments is very frustrating. If we start punishing these people, not that they'll change their thinking, but they'll be afraid to speak out, whether it's in the stadium, where there are cameras, put fear into those people. I want to keep fighting for it, but it's hard. It doesn't matter if I win or lose the games. I'm already a winner for being here. And lastly, via ESPN, repeated Racist abuse against Vinicius has started a heated debate in Spain about tolerance for racism. Pilar Alegra, Spain's sports and education minister, on Tuesday stressed the government's commitment to combating racism while also condemning the racist incidents. Violence, racism, xenophobia, any type of discrimination are the antithesis of the value that sport displays. Every two weeks, there are meetings with Spain's Sports Council, La Liga, and the Spanish Football Federation to sanction this type of violent behavior. We are going to continue along this line to banish xenophobic and racist behavior from sports, but also from society as we unfortunately continue to experience this. First things first, y'all, if there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, DMs are open, and please, if you can, become a channel member and support our work here at TYT Sports and or go to tyt.com slash join. This is rather simple to me. We have seen how the United States post-Trump years, during and post-Trump years, have shown that fascism should be on the rise and anything that is anti-racist, morally driven, should be labeled with the widest brush of being woke. And we continue to see this not just in the United States, because we've clearly led the way in the wrong direction. We are seeing it in other countries as well. I mean, Georgia Maloney won, um, and she is a complete fascist. Um in Brazil, the voters did the right thing, but who knows if that's even going to take and it's going to persist. And this poisonous, toxic mindset of going after someone because they are simply a darker complexion is preposterous. The only way to combat all of this as we are all one race 